Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we are going to control the speed of a DC motor using a single phase controlled rectifier and this will be a closed loop operation and uh, we will perform this experiment in MATLAB Simulink. Now let me show you what we want to achieve and what output is going to look like. Unlike last time and we are not using ProTS, we are not going to see any kind of animations but rather scopes like this. So let me first run this model which I created earlier and show you the scope. You can see the tracking of the speed. Uh, it has compiled. Now let's see the scope. Okay, as so you can see here, the tracking is pretty good. Uh, this is our reference and the actual speed which is tracked pretty nice. Now let me show you how we can create it. Now I'm going to assume that you know the basics of MATLAB and how to import different things. I'll surely be sharing some of the tips along the way. So first of all, we'll go from left to right and first bring the DC voltage source. Now make sure we use the uh, specialized technology. Uh, in this we can see the second option which is the specialized power systems. We'll use each and every component from that library only okay now a good thing is that whenever you bring a new component you should just modify the settings of it in our case I just take 230 volts and the amplitude of it now moving from left to right as we are going to use a single phase controlled rectifier we will require SCRs now in MATLAB this is thyristors can see okay I just control plus R to rotate it an additional thing is we can remove this measurement port so I just remove that thing and make it better also uh, before copying and pasting it will need a fourth thyristor I'll just name this one as T1 for ease of you know communication I just tap control and drag over to copy and paste it it automatically name it T2 which is a good thing similarly it's T3 and lastly T4 now only one thing is remaining which is to connect all this file uh, now I'm using the MATLAB 2017 version uh, you may be uh, I'm sorry 2021 version you may be using a different version which may have some more features or less features depending on you uh, you can change the parameters according to your wish or you can do All right, now uh, we did a mistake. <laughs> we are using a rectifier, so the source should be AC voltage source, and it's from specialized technology. And first thing is changing the frequency to 50 hertz and 230 volts. Cool. Now this is a supply, and we'll connect it to this port already. Uh, to this port, and uh, you can see this. Okay, this is done. Now we need a DC motor. In this we are not going to use the DC motor but rather we will use the DC machine for you know for, of the specialized library unlike the specialized motor which is not available in specialized technology. I tap again control R to rotate and control I to you know flip it so that you know you can give this armature supply from this point. Alright now mostly everything is done except you have to change the parameters of this DC machine which is to change it to you know this 5 HP 240 volts 1750 rpm and the field excitation is 300 volts so we'll have to use a DC source again I mean DC voltage source and as you can see from past history it automatically gave us this reading now we'll just connect it here and give this value as 300 as this is the rated field voltage excitation whatever you say now there's a measurement port here but this will have four bus right so what we need is to you know select some of those so i'll use a bus selector and you know change some of the parameter okay for changing the parameters i just connect it okay and now i'll just you know delete both those and include all of them here yeah 
you can just uh, you know, choose just two of those I can delete them right and apply okay great now the only thing is remaining is we need a torque load so I'll keep a constant value of let's say 20 Newton meter just change it to 20 and I'll give it to the torque load great now for a closed loop you will need feedback now why is that important because we want to control the speed the speed will be something different let's say a thousand rpm we want 1400 rpm so there will be some error now this error has to be you know sent to zero it should be zero it should be made zero so we'll pass this error to the pi controller and that will give us a signal now that signal will compare with a repeating sequence and we'll create a pulse now let me show you how to do this all right so let's make a subsystem right now i'll type subsystem and i got here something all right now this is you can keep anywhere i'll just keep it here double tap it to open it and i'll just press space to you know maximize the screen and watch everything properly now i'll just copy and paste it here the input ports as we require two of those control r to rotate them and uh, you know i'll also keep them okay paste replicate paste all right yeah now you'll you, you'll find out why i have this thought as well i name them this is our reference piece so i'll name it as r reference these are an actual so i'll name it as and actual great now this is error so this has to be deducted i'll use the sum block i mean not the exactly the sum block but I'll change the parameters to plus and minus. Great. Now, as I said earlier, we'll give this error to the PI controller. We don't have a PI control, we rather have a PID controller and we'll change its parameter to match the PI controller. Now, why PI controller? Because PID tuning may be dif difficult for us at this stage and I'll change the discrete time. Proportional value will keep it at 0 0.28. These are tried and tested values, so just trust them. And I'll just limit this output saturation. Why is that so? Uh, so that uh, the values may not go out of our range. A particular now we can give this signal to not directly the gate pulse will require a reference and a carrier wave to create a pulse. But in our case, we cannot use this as we are not controlling the current. All right. We are just controlling the speed it may happen that the current may increase in the motor which may damage it or the current may be less the motor may not be able to rotate so for that reasons what we'll do is we'll just assume that this is the reference for our current and we'll use the reference minus actual and this is i actual i i said you before that this is going to be something different so i'll use this i actual we'll keep this and okay great now this is the output we can see it as p1 which is pulse for one but as i said earlier we'll need a repeating sequence so i'll just you know, write quickly repeating sequence write a block here now i'll change the parameters to zero t by two oh i'm sorry t by four t by 2 which is 2t by 4 which is now 3t by 4 and lastly t now you may ask that what exactly is this t so this t is the the switching frequency we can change it to whatever you see maybe 10,000 hertz or 50,000 hertz whatever you want we'll go with 10,000 hertz we'll, we'll, we'll define it really soon now the output value should be 0 10 0 minus 10 and 0 great now this is what our signal is going to look like and we'll have to compare right so we'll need some comparator block so there is something known as relation operation which will you know do some kind of relation operation on the two inputs that we give if this is greater it will give us a one and if it's not it will give us zero something like that all right now i'll change this to greater than equal to because our reference should be greater than equal to from our carrier wave to greater pulse now you may ask that we have four switches or you can say fourth harister and we are just using one gate pulse it's not proper right so what i'll do now is i'll create a knot of this particular pulse i'll just 
copy and paste it here okay p2 automatically name now this should be a not of this right so i'll go and find a logical operator change it to not and give a signal okay sorry this input and this is output great now i'll just okay now that's uh we did an error right we did not use a controller here so what i'll do is i just copy and paste this controller in between here and yeah, it's done great <clears throat> great now i'll just change the values to point zero six now you may ask how did we get this values this is just tried and tested values we'll just keep it you can change it to find out something better all right now going back here as you can see we have got our block here great now what two things that we need we need actual speed and the armature current where are we getting from we'll get from this measurement pot and that was the reason why we got this bus here great now i cannot use this thing directly here for speed because this is in if you see here it's in gradient per second so i need to use a gain block to change the values and uh, the relation is something you know 60 by 2 pi i'll just write 30 by pi and it will change the radian per second into rpm which is root revolutions per minute so let's say a reference of what should i give i'll just give a reference of 1400 as let's explain you 1400 and this current is just going to go here great now this i cannot i can also connect this directly from here to here but this will really look messy and not good. so what i'll use here is a block known as a go to block i'll keep this here i'll change some of these parameters as i said earlier and whenever you bring uh, a component always change its parameters to make them better so i'll just name as g1 uh great okay so i'll just keep it here just control c and control v copy paste here you can also control and drag now these two both have same name i'll just change it to g2 and okay great now if you just hover here you will get a from block automatically now as you can see four switches to gate pulse i'll just give the same gate pulse to t1 and t2 as when t1 is on t4 should not be on as it will dead short circuit our source which we don't want so we'll use this not gate to keep this off and this tree 3 should not be on when t2 is on and which makes it better all right now we have set everything but one thing is remaining that is how will we verify it right so i'll need a scope again so i'll just bring a scope you can get scope of anything all right just keep here and this scope now an input of the reference and an actual so how will i connect it we can hover it to add right not only edit it and i'll keep it here great now let's run it and see what's going to happen okay it's going to compile it and there we go we got a lot of errors now if we understand them it's seeing something that we need to have a power gui block so yes that is an important thing which we we'll need a power gui block why do we require it because we have used this specialized technology and you know uh, we'll have to have a supplementary kind of thing which will just sit at a corner and i'll just change the continuous mode to discrete mode of simulation type great now i'll let's see just run for a second for just you can say two seconds only we don't want to see for 10 seconds it will just take a lot of time my my desktop is already slow and we don't want that thing as of now it is compiled properly and it's running it's t0 t1 and t2 great let's see the result what have we got okay all right that, let's see we have not reached 1400 now that's it's not good there has to be something missing right uh, and if you see what did we do wrong as i said before that you may get an error of t so i'll just right click here and go to model parameters go for callbacks go for initial function and just write t is equal to one divided by you know maybe thousand but let's go for ten thousand and okay and if i run again let's see what error am i going to get or it will going to run and if you see here 
okay it's still not going 1400 why is that so now we we, we forget one important thing and that is this thing it's not just 230 volts the peak amplitude is 230 root 2 and i'll go with a 240 into square root of 2 now this is just a built-in function we'll use this we'll not go to kelsey and find this exact value but we'll keep it here now great uh, we'll just run it once again to see have we actually attained the spin of 1400 or not oh we're still not getting it 1400 damn <laughs> what did we do wrong now function and just you know, change it to less a thousand if I say do we feel any kind of reference or are we still not good let's see let's see no problem yeah there we go so the switching frequency was way too much and we rectified it we solved a couple of things and there we go we attained a speed of 1400 now you may ask me that uh, the reference what we saw here was something you know changing from this to this to this how do we do that exactly so i used a signal builder i'll show this to you in a, in a different video maybe but the most basic idea is that if you change this value let's say not now 1400 but let's say 1200 let's say okay apply and i'll run it if we see at this the scope right yeah there we go we got a good speed now what interesting thing is when you can change this thing relation operator to whatever it was that before now run it i should be getting the same almost values as expected yeah there we go so it doesn't matter try and play with it you'll get the values some way or the other way what things can go wrong are really less you know you can also change the tour just for fun to see what difference it's going to make or not on our model and there you go great you have attained the speed of 1200 rpm you can change the values with the help of a signal builder We'll show that in the next video and that's it. Thank you so much for watching.